Okay, the Gator Bowl, uh, Clemson versus Kentucky. Kentucky running back Kay Davis, uh, over 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns. But Clemson is number seven in the country in total defense. So I think it, it's to me. Uh, I think uh, my, my defense is winning out so far in these bowl games. Uh, that Dabo Swinney is a great coach. Obviously, he's had a lot of a lot of success. That defense will smother a Kentucky offense, and they'll win in a shutout, 24 nothing. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. Uh, maybe not with the shutout, but I do think uh, Clemson has been good in recent years. Uh, and I don't know that Kentucky will be able to match that uh, just kind of speed and strength that I think Clemson will have in this game uh, over Kentucky. So I go Clemson and I say they do it by at least 14 points, though. Yeah, I think I, I agree that Clemson's going to win this game. I I, I want to I, I almost want to guarantee it's not going to be a shutout, though. Um, I think that uh, this has been you know a relatively disappointing season um, as as you know obviously for uh, Davos Winnie and, and his Clemson team, but I think that after this disappointing season, they're going to want to finish it off with a win over his SEC team. Yeah, the Sun Bowl, Oregon State versus Notre Dame. Uh, we're getting to some really big ones here. Uh, Notre Dame quarterback Sam Hartman is transferring. Uh, he won't play. And guess what? Oregon State quarterback. We got, got say his name, Cody. It's it's Uy Uy Yeah, that guy. Uh, he won't he won't play either. So we we can't pick a quarterback. We can't pick a team that doesn't have a quarterback because both of these teams don't have a quarterback. So uh, uh, Notre Dame running back also. Uh, and Notre Dame has a number eight total defense in the country. That's something to, to point your hat on. But uh, the rudderless Beavers against the rudderless Fighting Irish. Uh, what do we think? Oh, boy. Who is it? I've lost I think it. I think it starts on uh, Dustin this time. Okay. Um, I've always been in the opinion that Notre Dame is always way overrated. And so I'm going to stick with that opinion and say Oregon State wins. Uh, I'm the the other side of this. I obviously both quarterbacks not playing, and it's going to be a bunch of scrubs against each other, except for that Notre Dame defense. Uh, a lot of those players are playing, so uh, Notre Dame wins this one by multiple scores. Uh, I would normally go Notre Dame, um, but being that both teams don't have their leader uh, and Notre Dame doesn't have their running back, I think that that's going to play into a factor. They do have a good defense. Um, but it, these are two competitive teams and you're taking two pieces of the offense away. I'm going to have to give that to Oregon State. So first off, I think just as a correction, uh, Sam Hartman's not transferring. He's he's going to be going to the draft. I think he's oh, all, okay. all his uh, eligibility. He's, I think, had been in college for like 10 years now or something. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> he's Thanks. 26 or something. I don't even know how old he is. But anyway, um, I think I don't. I know Jonathan uh, Smith has been hired for Michigan State now, so I don't even know if he's coaching in this game. Yeah. Um, since he's not coaching this game, I think it's going to be Notre Dame. If he was coaching, I would choose Oregon State, but that's not the case. So Notre Dame wins this game. Good corrections, Cody. Thanks. Does that change anybody else's mind? <laughs> um, okay. Liberty Bowl, Memphis versus Iowa State. Memphis is 9-3 and three this year. Iowa State went 7-5 and five in a competitive Big 12. I think it's back to me. Uh, I think the the Power Five wins this one. Iowa State will win this one. Uh, I'm going to side with you, Iowa State. Just uh, the comp the competition that they have being stiffer is going to make them a tougher team. Um, I think they get it done by seven against Memphis. I'm calling the. Uh, uh, I mean, can we call it an upset? I think we're calling it an upset. I'm going with Memphis Tigers here. I think that they. They've always had a had a pretty good team and pretty good coaching, in my opinion. I think Iowa State is is a good team, um, you know, especially compared to, to Group of Five. But I think that Memphis is uh, is just gonna be able to pull it off. I think they just will be able to have a better uh, game plan. Yeah, Iowa State comes, you know, with their conference comes from a grind, slow, just get power over your opponent. I think Memphis can fight around that. Memphis will win. Okay. Uh, the Cotton Bowl Classic, uh, Missouri versus Ohio State. These are two top 10 teams. Uh, Missouri running back Cody Schrader ran for almost 1,500 yards and 13 touchdowns. 
Ohio, Ohio State wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. won the Boletnikoff, uh, best wide receiver in the country, probably a top five draft pick in this coming coming year. Uh, Ohio State quarterback Kyle McCord won't play, uh, preparing. I think he's transferring or preparing for the draft. Transferring. Okay. Transferring, committed to Syracuse. Syracuse. That's right. He's transferring to Syracuse. Harrison hasn't decided whether he's playing or not. I haven't heard anything one, one way or another about the wide receiver. Uh, again, he should be the top five draft pick. Ohio State does have the number three defense in the country uh, coming into this game as well. Uh, Missouri has a great offense. So uh, where are we? Cody or Yancey? Um, I'm not sure. I I got to think that my, my one of my favorite players in all of history raised his son right. I say Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to play. Uh, and for that reason, I think Ohio State takes the game. This is a, a kind of a tough one for me. I mean, Missouri kind of, kind of came out of nowhere this year. and We're playing really, really, really well. Um, I'm actually going to call the upset. I'm going to say Missouri is going to win this game in the Cotton uh, in the in the Cotton Bowl against Ohio State. It's going to be a grinder, but I think that they're going to be able to pull it off at the end uh, and shock the world. Um, I I don't think that Missouri winning will be a shock because this is a team that has competed and beat SEC teams multiple years in a row and, and did a fantastic season this year. Missouri's a powerful SEC team and and they're going to win it. Yeah, uh, I, I hope that Marvin Harrison plays. I don't think he will just because he doesn't have his quarterback to throw in the ball. Uh, and so I, I think that combined with everything else and, and I, I don't think Missouri will is winning because of a lack of Ohio state's effort. I think Missouri wins because they're better. Uh, and so Missouri beats Ohio state. Is, Cody, are you still, or is am I the last one? Okay. I, I, I went already. Yeah. You went. You, yeah. You, that's right. You did. Okay. You were, uh, the peach bowl. Ole Miss versus Penn State. This is another huge one. Uh, if it was next year, both of these teams would be in the playoff. Uh, so uh, Ole Miss quarterback Jackson Dart, quietly one of the nation's best quarterbacks. 20 touchdowns, five interceptions this year. But Penn State has the nation's number one defense, the best defense in the country. Uh, they keep teams to just over 200 yards per game, which is unheard of. Uh, they average two takeaways per game. Uh, so we're going over to Cody, Ole Miss, Penn State. Yeah, um, I, I assume that uh, Judkins, running back for Ole Miss, is playing because he he had an, a stellar season, 15 touchdowns and over 1,000 yards. Um, but even if he is playing, it's not going to be that much of a difference for them. As we said, this is going against the best defense. I think Penn State wins this game. Yeah, I'm going to go with, with Penn State, just that defense, just making it hard to move the ball and getting those turnovers to flip the field for good field position. Penn State will win. Yeah, uh, it's been my theme, I guess, for most of this this session. Great defense wins this game. Penn State by 17. Yeah, echo it all the way through. Uh, I mean, you 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 can't beat a team if they can take the ball from your offense and produce points from it. It's just tough. And I think Penn State's going to create those kind of situations where Ole Miss isn't able to move the ball. They find themselves in bad situations, giving the ball up. I all right, we're almost there. Uh, Auburn versus Maryland and the Music City Bowl. Uh, Maryland has, well, they did have Taulia Tagovailoa. What was that? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, but I think Tagovailoa won't play in this one. I think he's uh, hold, He's preparing for the draft. He's to his younger brother. Uh, going against a tough Auburn defense that took Alabama to the end of the Iron Bowl. Um, over to you, Dustin. Auburn, Maryland. Um, Auburn, it really depends what Auburn team shows up, but if the, if the good Auburn team shows up, then they'll take it easy win by 20. I was thinking that, that, yeah, we, it, it, we've had different Auburn teams play in each game. It seems like, uh, and I think the, uh, the bad one shows up here. I think Maryland pulls this upset even without their quarterback. It's hard to play in a football game if you lose your team identity. And if nobody knows what your team identity is because you don't show up every, you know, the same way every game, it causes problems. And I, I have to agree with you, Scott. I think Maryland beats Auburn for that reason. Uh, if you can't show up and, and be consistent, it's going to cause trouble. And I'm going to make it 50 50 here. I'm going to say an Auburn team, the good one shows up here. Um, and I think they, they, they will beat the, uh, 
the Tonga Vailoa Liss Maryland team, and uh, but it will be um, closer. It won't be by twenty points or point or whatever that is. So um, it'll be maybe a, a ten point game. Yeah. The Orange Bowl, Georgia versus Florida State, <laughs> two teams that are both angry about not being in the playoff. Uh, Georgia beat by Alabama was beaten beaten by Alabama in the SEC championship game finishes number five Florida State down the their quarterback Jordan Travis still finish undefeated but are left out of the playoff in favor of Alabama both teams are really pissed off about this they're both teams are in the top 15 in defense will will both teams want to show up or will both teams be so angry they don't want to play we're, we're going to find out about that uh is it back to me yeah, I think so. Uh, FSU, Florida State is overmatched because of missing their quarterback. Uh, Georgia wins this one by 25 plus, and they give the middle finger to the playoff committee on the way out. So, uh, I think that's a good motivating factor. Uh, I I agree with you there, and uh, I have to stick to the kind of the theme. If if you don't have somebody steering the ship, we're going to hit an iceberg and. That's a Titanic type of problem. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Georgia being able to pull this one out. Um, they're a tough team, usually year in and year out. They're a tough team to beat and to compete with in uh, and, and a tough conference. So I'm going to go with uh, Georgia here. Uh, this should probably be renamed to the Capital One Snub Bowl. That's probably what it should be called. So uh, <laughs> the Bowl of Two Snub Teams. Um, I agree. It's going to be a, a defensive showdown, but uh, I I would say that Georgia is going to win this game. I think it's going to be by about seventeen points. Um, so they'll win it. Well, they'll win it convincingly, but not by twenty plus. Yeah, Cody. I would joke that they should rename it the separate but equal bowl. Um, <laughs> say, oh, you're that a might be a problem. That might be a problem. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that one. Um. Don't uh, name yeah. it that on Juneteenth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's 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 an unfortunate matchup, but uh, hopefully we'll get some of that fixed next year with the, with the expanded playoff. Uh, but I'm going to agree with Georgia win here. The Arizona Bowl, Toledo versus Wyoming. We've dropped back into a little bit of lesser bowl, but uh, Toledo running back Penny Boone ran for 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns on their way to 11 and two record. Wyoming finishes eight and four on a pretty good season in the Mountain West as well. Uh, over to you, Yancey. Toledo versus Wyoming. I think I take Toledo just for the better record um, and for having momentum going into the season. Um, and I think they they would probably have too much firepower for Wyoming, in my opinion. I agree. I think this is a Toledo uh, win, and I think it's actually going to be a pretty easy win, to be honest. I think that they're going to. Uh, win by about uh, 17 to 20 points or so. Uh, and uh, But, I mean, Wyoming is going to score on them as well. So it'll probably be like a, a 38 to 20 or something like that kind of game. Uh, I'm going with Wyoming here. I'll go with Toledo. Okay. Uh, the Relia Quest Bull, Wisconsin versus LSU. Obviously, Jaden Daniels just won the Heisman. He had almost 5,000 yards of total offense, passing, rushing, a uh, total of 50 touchdowns and just four interceptions. <laughs> uh, he's going to be a, a, a top 10 draft pick next year. He's not playing in this game because he's preparing for the draft, unfortunately. Uh, another one to watch is LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors, the second best wide receiver in the country next to Marvin Harrison. He had 1,500 yards receiving and 14 touchdowns. Uh, LSU is the number one offense in the country. Can Wisconsin do anything to slow it down? Uh, over to me, Cody. Cody. Uh, to answer your question, no, they cannot do anything to slow this down. I think this is a overly like a uh, what's the word overly matched up game. I think LSU wins this one convincingly and walks out with the trophy. Uh, good news is Wisconsin doesn't have to do anything to slow them down. LSU is doing it on their own by quarterback not playing. I mean. It, 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 there's a long history of Heisman winners not doing great in NFL. So why don't you just show up in your bowl game and do great there? Um, prove your draft stock to your, to whoever wants to draft you. So Wisconsin's going to win. Cause I'm mad about it. I'm mad about it too, but that doesn't change the outcome. LSU still wins. 
<laughs> yeah, I have to agree, but I'm not going to shift so far to say that uh, LSU is going to lose to Wisconsin. We can be as mad as we want that all these stars are only being stars until the most important games and then quitting. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that LSU is going to be a better team in this game, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. The Fiesta Bowl. We got five more. Fiesta Bowl. Liberty versus Oregon. Undefeated Liberty, the other snub, right? Uh, they uh, No one ever picked them to, to even ha ch have a chance for the four-team playoff, but they're undefeated. Quinton Cooley has 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns rushing. But Bo Nix, Oregon's quarterback, had 40 touchdowns and just three picks. Uh, he's another top quarterback in the draft class. I don't think he's playing either in this one. Uh, actually, uh, I think he is, actually. Is he playing? I okay. think he said he is playing. That's awesome. I'm glad he is. Uh, uh, Liberty, the number three offense in the country, but is actually the worst of the two teams because Oregon is number two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so a lot of scoring could happen here. Dustin. Yeah, I, I'm glad that the committee takes liberty and says, hey, your great team will put you up against, you know, this extremely powerful team and let you really go out there and, and prove it. Um, I, I'm glad that the committee did that and paired them up against Oregon, but Oregon's just going to be so powerful. They're just they're just so good on offense. Oregon has scored 50 points. Yeah, I'm I'm really cheering for Liberty. I want them to prove that they can win a big game, but Oregon's going to win this one by 30. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think uh, I think when you're when you're taking a team that doesn't experience the type of high paced play that you're going to see against Oregon like Liberty, I, I honestly I thought they did taxes. I had no idea that Liberty was a college. Um, so, <laughs> so it's great that they're undefeated, but that that's going to stop when they meet Oregon and they play a football game. Uh, and I think it's going to be trouble. And I think. Uh, they're just going to be so outmatched that people in the future will be like, oh, well, well, that's why they didn't match teams like that against teams like that. That kind of example of a game uh, for Oregon. I say they win by 20 plus easily. Yeah, I, I agree. I think with everyone, it's going to be an Oregon win. I, I, I'm excited they put Liberty in this game. Uh, I'm also cheering for Liberty. I hope that they could, you know, I hope that they could upset Oregon. That would be quite the spectacle. Um, but I do expect them to to be better than I think a lot of people uh, um, expect against Oregon. I think it's going to be a fifty to thirty game. I'm saying they're going to put thirty points up on this Oregon defense, which is which would be impressive. Yeah, you guys ever seen those boxing matches where they let a kid with Down syndrome box against somebody? You know, <laughs> you know, no one's getting knocked out, and you know, <laughs> that, I'm just saying that's what this <laughs> game is. That's my final opinion on it. That's that's a good a good example. I hope it's not true, but uh, <laughs> okay. The Citrus Bowl. This is the last one before we get to the playoff. Iowa versus Tennessee. Iowa is the worst, like the number last, whatever number that number is, the last ranked offense in the country. Uh, Two hundred and thirty nine yards per game, but they win the games on the strength of their number five defense. Uh, great defense versus Tennessee, which is the number seventeen offense in the country. Watch out for Joe Milton, Tennessee quarterback, another good one for the draft. Uh, he's raw, young and raw. He's the Anthony Richardson of this draft, uh, So, uh, but talented. So great defense in Iowa, great offense in Tennessee. Uh, who is it? It's you. It's me. Okay. I usually would, would be going defense in this one, but you have to score some points to win. <laughs> uh, so Tennessee is <laughs> going to win this one. Uh, I disagree. I think that uh, Iowa's defense is going to be their strength. I think they create a couple of turnovers uh, and get the win by about seven or ten, some that kind of game. Uh, I agree with Scott. I think Tennessee is going to win this game, but it's 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 going to look poor on their part because they're going to only score about 15 points, 14, 15 points. So it'll be like a 14 to three <laughs> game. Yeah, Iowa's just too slow. It's just too slow. Tennessee it will do just fine. Big win. Okay, the Rose Bowl, the playoff semifinal number one. Uh, Alabama versus Michigan. Alabama quarterback Jalen Milrow, 23 touchdowns and six interceptions. Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy, 19 touchdowns against four picks. And then a, good, a lot of good running backs. Uh, 
Jace McClellan for Alabama, six touchdown runs on 800 yards. Michigan running back, best in the country. He scored 24 rushing touchdowns. That's insane. There are some teams that don't score that much as a team. Uh, but 24 rushing touchdowns for Blake Corum. Michigan is also the number two defense in the country, just below Penn State. Uh, this is Jim Harbaugh versus Nick Saban. Must see football. Uh, obviously, uh, we have the the issue of the uh, um, the the what do you call it the the scouting other other players that the the big scandal going on with Michigan that they're going to look into it even further. But uh, I don't think they're going to look at, into it before this game necessarily. So. We got Jim Harbaugh versus Nick Saban and two really good teams. Who are we starting with? I think it's uh, Yancey. Um, I'm actually going to take Alabama in this game. I know they lost the game, but uh, when I was looking at the teams that both teams have played, I felt like they had a stronger schedule uh, and more of a reason to have a loss on their record. Uh, Nick Saban is an incredible coach. Along with Harbaugh, they're both incredible coaches. But I, I do think that Alabama will just have – uh, an extra spark from having more competition throughout the year. Um, and I think that's going to show through and they'll get a, they'll get a win. It won't be huge. I think it'll be by three, maybe seven points. Yeah. I, so I think this is going to be a uh, going back and forth game score, 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 things like that. And then just matching whatever they do. If it's a three and out, the other team gets a three and out. It's just going to keep going back and forth. I think it comes down to the end of the game. It'll be a great game, but Michigan's going to win this game. They're going to uh, win the game about 34 to 31. Um, I, I think Michigan has a lot more to be angry about, and they're going to play angry with everything, all the noise that they've heard this season and then the embarrassment last season. I think Michigan just has more anger to chant and are going to win because of that, Michigan. I, I agree mainly with Cody on this one that it's going to be a back and forth game Two extremely well coached teams that are going to, uh, to, to match each other score for score or turnover for turnover. Uh, but I think Michigan pulls away in the very end, 34, 24 final score there that Michigan wins. Um, I'm also going against Alabama in every way I can, but <laughs> yeah. So, okay. The sugar bowl, the other set of playoff semifinal, Texas versus Washington. Uh, Wisconsin or Wisconsin, Washington quarterback Michael Penix was the Heisman runner up. 33 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 4,200 yards passing. Quinn Ewers for Texas is the is the Texas quarterback there. 21 touchdowns against six picks. Uh, and then two good running backs who both rushed for almost the same amount of yardage. Jo Jonathan Brooks for Texas, Dylan Johnson for Washington. Another <laughs> to look at Wa Washington wide receiver Romeo Dunze. Uh, 1,400 yards receiving, 13 touchdowns. An another first-round wide receiver next year with Marvin Harrison and uh, the the guy from LSU. I can't remember his name right now. The, those three are the top three wide receivers in the in the, and these are great offenses. Texas is number nine. Washington number 12 in the country. Uh, I think it's over to Cody. Texas versus Washington. Yeah. In this game, I'm a I'm a big Washington fan. I want Washington to win this game. They can, but they won't. Um, I think Texas is going to come up in the end. They have the better defense. Uh, Washington, uh, Washington's defense is just not um, stellar like Texas's defense is. And Texas also has that great offense. So they're just a well-balanced, uh, well-rounded team. Um, and it's going to it's gonna show out in this game. I think they're going to win this game uh, probably by the same score you just said, Scott, in the other one, 34-24. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict Washington. I'm going to predict that they pro prove that they belong. Washington wins. Um, this is a fast-paced, high-scoring game. Uh, I think neither offense is really going to be stopped, but I'm taking the upset. Texas wins 41-37. Uh, football's not a sport. It's a religion in Texas, and that's why they're <laughs> going to win this football game. It is over and over and over again. They know – uh, and when you when you when you breed that into your children, it shows when you play football. Uh, let's go Longhorns, I think, in this one. OK, and then we got the national championship and we actually we have three different matchups here uh, between the four of us. So uh, let's start with Yancey here. You have a rematch from early season, Alabama versus Texas. Uh, Texas beat Alabama earlier this season and now they would play in the mm -hmm. national championship again. Who are you picking in that rematch? Um, I would take Texas. Yeah. 
Uh, Cody and I both have a Michigan versus Texas final. So, Cody, let's start with you. Between Michigan and Texas, that's going to be a Michigan win. I think they're just the better team overall. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking the defense and the running game in that one. Uh, Michigan will win a really close one, uh, win its first national championship since the 90s. And uh, so I'm taking Michigan too. Dustin, you have a Michigan versus Washington. Yeah, I'm going to pick Washington there. I think I think Penix is going to going to show out um, there. Washington's going to win it. That'd be cool. All right. Well, uh, we are th – that that concludes today. Uh, we're taking at least next week off. By the way, next week, Yancey, happy birthday. Thanks, uh, man. <laughs> uh, it would be on our podcast next Wednesday, right? Uh, yeah, so. yeah. It would. But I, I think we're taking next week off due to the holidays. Uh, we initially said we'd take two weeks off. We'll we'll see. Do we want to do one on January fifth, or do we want to take that one off too? And it, next, the Wednesday after would be the third. Third, the third. Sorry. Uh, we we'll can, take... we can plan we can plan for it so we can talk about some of the balls that have happened and do a preview for yeah. the national championship coming up there. Okay, let's plan on it. All right, so next week off, uh, we'll see you in two weeks, and uh, we'll log off now, and we'll see how right we are or how wrong we are. Okay, thanks, everyone. Awesome. See you guys. See ya.